Welcome back to the channel, folks. I'm your host, Fog. Thank you for joining another episode here on Battle Gamers. And today, it's going to be a quick video. There's Yoda. We're basically what happened yesterday. So I think it's August 19th was when the actual firmware launched was for the Legends Pinball. I think it's the universal for firmware. So both the uh, At Games Ultimate Arcade and the Legends Pinball got the firmware update and it's 5.47. So version 5.47. And what that did, and, and you'll see kind of a screenshot here is that it enabled the accelerometer on the Legends Pinball to be used for Pinball FX3 on Steam. So it's only the Steam version as far as I've been able to see, and I've been able to confirm it, tested it. I thought what we'd do is actually go through, configure it together. I've shown some configuration videos, you'll see those linked below. But this one is specific in terms of a piece you have to activate, which is like your left analog stick, right? You have to basically tell Steam that there's a left analog stick, and that left analog stick is the accelerometer. So we'll talk about that, kind of showcase how to do that. I've also uploaded the configurations into Steam. So you can just go into Steam, and you should be able to download the configuration for this that I've uploaded, and then it should just work. But if you want to customize it, if you want to adjust the sensitivity, you're going to want to see this. So stay tuned, we'll check it out, and then we'll walk through how to do it. So now that we're on the device and we're going to start setting up the control deck, and, and I want to clarify that what I'm walking through is for the arcade control deck for the Legends Pinball, not the one that ships with it. The one that ships with it, with it is seen as an X input device the arcade control deck is not seen by Steam as an X input device. So you have to configure it. You basically have to tell Steam how to deal with the inputs it's getting. So I have configured mine already, but we'll just go in and do this again so everybody can see it. So what you'll want to do is go into your settings, go into control settings, and then go and select your detected controller and define the layout. So mine's already set up. I'm going to reset that so everybody can see that. You will need a mouse and a keyboard just briefly, or a mouse essentially. And what you want to do is select the first one at the top, which is your primary action. And you're going to make that A just like it would be on an Xbox controller. So we'll go in and we'll click. Hopefully it'll select it. Okay, now we should be good. Okay. A, go back is your B button. Hang on. You got to select them. You got to make sure it's highlighted. B, tertiary is Y. Secondary action is X. Start, I use the actual start button down here. Guide, I use the, I guess it's the menu button for the machine. It's the other button to the right of the start. Back, I use the actual back button, which is the red one on the far left. Then you look at left stick click, right stick click. These are optional. You don't have to set these up. There's not really a reason to set it up, but down the road there could be. I'm not 100% sure. So if you really want to do that, maybe make it Z and make the right stick click C, it's up to you. Left shoulder would be your top left side button. Right shoulder, top right one, like that. D-pad up, left, down, right, that's just your, your controller here. So up, and then do left, and then do down, and then do right. Your left stick X. So this is your X axis. This is where the new accelerometer comes into play. So to get that to work, what you want to do is click on it with your mouse and then just nudge the machine from the right hand side. So give it a good whack and it should say axis five. Then you do the same thing for your left stick Y, which is your up and down. And you'll want to nudge the machine forward 
And I'll, you know, maybe hit it directly in the center. That's access four. And then you want to do your right stick. So your right stick, you don't want to mess with the X, which is your horizontal. You want to mess with the Y, which is forward. And this is where your plunger is going to come into play. So all you have to do is just pull the plunger back and let go. That's your access two. Then you have your left trigger, which is your white side or white uh, pinball button. And then you have right trigger, which is your white on the right hand side. And at that point, that's the full configuration. You'll just hit save. You can rename this. I'm just going to name it. Uh, we'll, we'll do Legends Pinball Arcade Control Deck. And this is where I'm using my keyboard. Legends Pinball. Arcade Control Deck. And you could upload that if you want. I'll just go ahead and upload it. It'll take a second. Now it's found it and we're good to go. So at this point, Steam understands how to interact with the control deck itself. So we're just gonna back up a little ways here. The next thing we're gonna wanna do is then go choose our game. And under here, it only works for Pinball FX3. You're going to want to select Pinball FX3. You're going to want to go down to Manage, go to Controller Configuration. And you can see right here, it says At Games LP 1.0 Pinball FX3 with Plunger and Accelerometer. That's the one that I've created. You can find that by going into Browse Configurations, which is hitting the X, and go to Community. And you can see it right here. You can just hit A to import it. It'll download it right into your machine. And at that point, you're good to go. It's already set up. You can just hit done and we can fire up the game. So give me one second to reconfigure the screen and then we will go ahead and do some testing with this. Okay, it's looking pretty good. We've got everything set up and now we should be able to go in and test the configuration. So. Again, this is with the arcade control deck. That's always a big thing because of the two differences. I do not have access to the original control deck piece any longer, but I believe all you need to do is go in and do the left analog stick nudge, you know, forward on the, on the X and the Y axis, and you should be good to go even using the same configuration file. And we'll go ahead and test it on one that I know very well, Theater of Magic, and make sure that we've got everything correct here. Now there is some sensitivity adjustment that you'll wanna do uh, to, to get it to your liking. The one that I have set up has a, it's my default, it's what I set it as but I will show you how to go in and adjust that here to get it to, to where you want. It's not going to, I don't believe it's going to be 100% perfect. This was never intended to do this. They've just made it work with OTG. So first thing we can see now is we, we have our, you know, buttons. You can see the table a jump a little bit. That is because of that accelerometer. When you press a button, sometimes it will catch it. It will actually catch that little bump. Now the plunger also works, so we can move that up and down. And I have adjusted it so that the right white pinball button will adjust your view. I like that so you can get all these configured correctly. You could change that if you wanted. If you didn't want that on there, you can do that. The left button activates your wizard powers, which is something specific to um, Pinball FX3 that you can turn on for each table, so it's easier to access. You also have your back, which will take you to your menu and everything. So now, what we'll go ahead and do, I'm gonna nudge the table so you can kind of see this working. Again, it's not going to be a lot, it's just slight. 
So if I can hit it, you saw the table move a little bit. It bounces. There goes the ball. It it depends. Like it's it's not 100% perfect. You will hurt your hand after a while. I've noticed that. I've been beating this thing for a while and um, my hand has started to hurt. So, but it is it is functioning correctly. And you can go ahead and play. Like I said, you will notice that every once in a while the actual table by moving a button or by pulling the plunger will set off the accelerometer. It's not horrible, but it, it can do that. So we'll go ahead and try to capture the ball on a on one of the um, flippers and see if we can't show it a little bit better here. I don't know if this one's gonna work as well. So I'm gonna try nudging it left. You can see it moved and then <laughs> Making it bounce up, I can do it, but it takes a little bit more. So again, that's a that's a, a setting for sensitivity. So let's go ahead and jump out of there and let's go into the menu. We can go into options. And I just wanna show the controller setup here. So under controls, under the menu, this is how I have it set so you know. Your left flippers, or your flippers are your left and right bumper buttons, the red buttons we set up. You have a um, manual ball lunch is your right stick. That is the plunger, in this case. Your view mode is your white right pinball button. The nudge is set to the left stick, and that's where the accelerometer is set to. And then you have your wizard power, which is the left uh, white button on the pinball buttons. So that gives you the overall idea of how I have it set up within Pinball FX. Now I'm going to jump into the Steam menu from here. You can do that by hitting that menu button if you set it up that way. And what we'll go down to is controller configuration. Now this is that controller configuration you would have imported uh, that I had already created and, and uploaded onto Steam. Here you can go in and adjust the sensitivity of the accelerometer if you go down to joystick move, which is the left analog stick, and hit A, and then go to your right and go down to additional settings. All of your sensitivity settings are here, so you can adjust the dead zone. The outer dead zone is what's going to really matter as far as I'm aware. I have it, again, defaulted into a, a very specific place that I think works well. And then you can go over and mess with the sensitivity horizontal scale, so your nudge left and right, and then your vertical nudge up or down would be, but you don't do it down here, it's just your up. So these are the two that can you can turn on the sensitivity. And everybody may like it. So if you put it all the way to high, everybody's going to have their own taste for it, but I'm going to put them both to high. I'm going to leave the dead zone where it's at just to kind of show you can adjust it. So we'll go ahead and hit back all the way back out and return to the table. Now um, you should be able to see like it's a little bit more sensitive. Like I can move it around a lot now, right? Just by tapping. So you may see the table also move when I'm messing with the button. Sometimes it'll do it a little bit more, sometimes it won't. The plunger seems to set it off because it gets a vibration of the forward nudge moving forward. So you might notice that when I pull the plunger on the next one. Oh, we'll just go ahead and start another one over here. So let's see if the, the plunger will make it nudge forward. Yeah, see, it, it nudged it a little bit. If you saw the table jump, you can get rid of that. But like I said, you're gonna spend a lot of effort going in and making, tailoring it to your taste. But it's it's a nice option that they've included it. Now, I'm sure there'll be better setups, um, but this is just the first one that I took on it of how to, to make it work. You can kind of see I'm just nudging the table. It's noticing it too. We'll see if we can't do it over here. Ah, I gotta catch the ball. Give me 
one sec to see if I can... Ah. I need to catch it on that left one. Now, if you set the... If you toy around with the dead zone too much, you can actually, like, enable it to, like, where you just smack the machine and it'll fire the ball off. So you've really got to kind of watch that one. You can see I, I don't have it set that high, but it's definitely still noticeable. Let's see if we can't get it over on that left one. And as far as I know, it, it seems to work pretty much the same with each table. There's not a lot of difference. We'll check one more table here, but you can kind of see, like you can see it moving just ever so slightly. Every once in a while, it'll get like a real nudge. And, and the accelerometer is kind of over here by the plunger, as far as I can tell. But <clears throat> that's, that's it working there. Let's check out another table really fast. And, and we'll choose one that's not one of the Williams tables. We'll go in and, um, uh, let's see. Let's do one of the ones that's a Zen table. Uh, paranormal. paranormal. Now, if you toy around with the volume settings, this is, this is a separate thing we could talk about later. If you toy around with the volume settings, you can actually make the, the exciters fire off as well with this game. So this is really a full experience using the Legends Pinball. Okay, now that we're in paranormal, uh, again, see that was, that did make it fire off. The reason being is I, I think there's just a little bit more sensitivity on this one. And I have, I don't have those defaulted. So it's pretty, it's pretty high right now. If I default it to what I, had set it up as the upload, it shouldn't do that. So yours shouldn't do that if you just take and pull in the upload version that I put in. But yeah, you can see, I mean, it's definitely got, it's got a nudge to it. Let's go ahead and try it again on the launch. So again, we see the table move when I pull the plunger. So it's set up, a, It's the sensitivity is just a little too high right now. And those exciters are actually firing off pretty hard, so that could also toy around with the accelerometer. Um, again, it's a lot of tailoring, but once you've downloaded it, once you've set it up the way I showed you here, and you pull in the, and import the, the version that I put up into Steam, you can tailor it the way you want. You can toy around with it. You can always delete it out and, and restart if you want. But yeah, it's, it's there, it works. Sometimes it's a little too sensitive, like right now. Like I said, we've got it way too sensitive, but that was just for demonstration. And that's it, folks. I hope everybody got something out of this and uh, this helped you kind of set up your machine. If you have any questions, definitely throw it into the uh, comments. I'll be happy to try to help troubleshoot. And if you would do me a favor, give it a like, let other people see this, and also come back Check out the channel, subscribe. We'd love to see you stop in, see all the other things that we do here. And again, appreciate you watching. Have a great day. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.